you know, even today, what we're, what we're going to go over, you know, it's going to be a little different than what I normally do, but, you know, I wanted to jump into this, but it was like, I need to give you guys some background, and we need to talk about it, and we need to go into this thing easily, because, you know, when we start talking about freedom, we talked about we're free from sin, because, you know, when we talk about being witnesses, it began to open up a whole realm of things, because, the thing is, we start talking about being a witness, and then we start thinking about what we are witnesses of, and then we started looking at all of the things that being a, a witness, uh, 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 what it was and, and what we were witnesses of. We became witnesses of the resurrection, and we began saying how free we were because of the resurrection. So, so, so we're, we're free from sin, and then, uh, and then we're free from the law. And I began to look at that thing because uh, we don't really talk about, we don't really talk about the law. We just really talk, about, and, and, and the New Testament is, is talks so much about the law and, 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 and what it was and, and what it's not, and what, but we don't even deal with it. Matter of fact, we have come into a situation where we, we've come out, you know, we, we're, we're free from the law, but we've come in and, and we've bound ourselves back up. So we want to look at this, and we want, to, we, want, we, we, want, we want to begin to look at the law. We want to begin to look at how we're free, why we're free, uh, what we're exactly, what does that mean, what we're free from? Because freedom from sin, was, we talked about last week, and, and we've been talking about, but freedom from sin and the law, that's shown in our witness. And so we've got to begin to understand that. John, John, um, John, 8 and 36, John 8 and 36, and I, I tell y'all, this, this got to be a word because y'all know yesterday when we was putting everything, you know, it was here, you know, we've been, you know, y'all stepping up your game, I'm stepping up my game, and so we, we've had all of this in yesterday, so while we were working on it yesterday, my wife is like, I'm dizzy and I can't see and she's falling out and she, I'm wheeling her in the wheelchair. It's, 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 it's hilarious now, but. It, you know, so it, it, it was, we, we, we was having this, this actual attack happening to her uh, um, yesterday. I mean, and it, and, 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 and it turned out to be she had some, 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 some drink something. So, you know, but anyway, anybody, if y'all was at the Kevin on stage, you know what I'm talking about. But, um, but, but it was one of those spiritual attacks. And we was praying and everything, and, I, and as I'm willing, I'm saying it's going to be really funny tomorrow thinking about this while she's up praising. That's what I was thinking about while, while she was sick. And I'm like, you got to go to the emergency room? Because I was like, you know, devil, you will not have any victory. She's going to be here on Sunday, and she's going to be praising the Lord. And, 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 and so, but anyway, so that, that's what we was, was, was going through. Because sometimes, you know, you, you, you just have to recognize the tax from the devil. Things just happen to try to take your mind off of what you're supposed to be doing. All right, so let's look at this. John 8 and 36. Word of God says, if the Son sets you free, you are truly free. So we've got, like I said, free from sin, free from the law, released from the law. And so that, that's something that we have to uh, understand. Look at Romans 6 and 14. The Word of God says this. Sin is no longer your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Sin is no longer your master. You no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. Look at Romans 7 and 4. Word of God says, so my dear brothers and sisters, this is the point. You died to the power of the law when you died with Christ. And now you are united with the ones the one who was raised from the dead, the one who was raised from the dead, as a result, we can produce a harvest of good deeds for God. And then it goes on and says, when we were controlled by our old nature, sinful desires were at work within us. And the law arose these evil desires that produced a harvest of sinful deeds resulting in death. But now we have been released from the law, for we have died to it and are no longer captive to its power. Now we can serve God, not in the old way of obeying the letter of the law, 
but in the new way of allowing, of living in the spirit, right? And so I looked at that, and I've been, you know, it, 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 you know we talked about this a little bit last week, we just talked about the law, but we have to begin to, 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 to look at what we know about the law and what we know about sin. And then, and then that's the only way we can begin to understand how we're now free from sin and free from the law. There's some people who, who, who you know, who've taken it to understand that the only reason they're sin is because of the law. But, but I want to show you something, because I, I, I want to show you that uh, uh, sin began in the Garden of Eden. Sin began in the Garden of, of, of Eden with doubt and unbelief, and then, it began, and then disobedience. And then with the disobedience brought forth the sin. Right? So sin, so, so, so the original sin was in the Garden of Eden. And so sin brought separation from God. Sin brought, brought separation from God. See, because a, prior to this, they walked with God, they talked with God, they, they had communion with God, uh, whatever they needed, God provided. And so, you know, you know, they were on one accord with God. God's spirit dwelt in them. And, and, but sin brought separation from God. And once sin entered into the world, God had to kick them out of the God, Garden of Eden. They had to, they had to leave because uh, it, it was no longer where they belonged. They no longer belonged in the presence of God. Sin made them an enemy of God. Uh, and, and so they, you know, that's when we had the first sacrifice for sin. You know, we said that without, without the shedding of blood, there could be no remission or forgiveness of sin. Well, how do you think they got those animal skins that God gave them to wear? God had to kill an animal. He had to shed that blood so that their sins could be forgiven and, 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 and they, could, they could move on. Because, but, they, but they still now uh, had a sin nature. All right? So God's serious about sin. And he won't have any relationship with anyone who has sin, who commits sin. He will not have any relationship with him. And so, he became, so, so, so time went on. And, you know, and, and I'm going through, you know, I'm, going, I'm just, I'm just going to go through parts of the Old Testament. I'm not even going to give you scripture. We'll talk about that on Wednesday. But what we want to look at is that time, as time went on, sin got more and more uncontrollable. People began to do whatever they could imagine. They did whatever was right in their sight. They just, hey, you want to do it? Let's try it. You know, and, and, and it began to stink in God's nostrils. He got sick of it. He got so sick of, of them. It says, so, so then sin brought anger from God. He got so sick of them, he was angry, got angry. He was, I just want to kill them all. I just want to kill them all. I don't even want to look at y'all. Y'all you, you, you know how you even got your, some kids, your, your kids that got messed up so bad, you was like, just get out of my face. I don't even, see, I don't even want to look at you. I want to see your face. Go on in your room. Well, multiply that times a million. God was like, I don't know, I don't want to see your face. I'm just, I, I'm just sad I even created you in the first place. Right? And so God, you know, he, 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 he saved one family, destroyed everybody else through the flood. See, because, you know, and so, so see, even when I'm thinking about this is that all of us, you know, you just, just, just think all of us is coming from Noah, Noah's family. Everybody else was killed on the earth. Only ones left was Noah and his family. So God said, we're going to start all over again. Start all over again with, 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 with Noah and his family. But understand something, you know, the sin was still there. And as they, and as they family grew and as their family multiplied, Noah and his family, immediate family, might have been right in God's sight. But everybody else started sinning again. Because sin was, it, it was in the nature of man. And so it brought forth uh, 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 anger from God, and then sin brought a vision from God. You know, he said, I, I ain't going, I, I promise I'm not going, you know, 
destroy everybody else again with water. And then he said, he, he, he said, you know what, I got a plan. Now his goal is still to save everybody, right? His, you know, because in case y'all didn't know it, all people are God's people. We, we you know, I'm going to talk about that later. We, you know, we got this mentality of we stepchildren. I'm going to show you something. I'm, I, I want you, to, I want you to, to listen as I tell you. We ain't, we ain't step. We ain't step. All people are God's people. All people came from Noah and his family. But God had a plan. His plan was I need to save all of my people from sin. And so here's my plan. I'm going to get this one family here. I'm getting Abram, and I, I, and I want him to be the father. Uh, 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 he said, uh, what did he say? He said, many nations. You know, but we got, we got this in our head that we're thinking that he just was the father, father of Israel. But the original goal was he was going to be the father of many nations, right? But he said, I got a plan. At first, I got I to get, I got to separate some folk because I need them to be my people because I, I, I need a test case. I need ground zero. I, I, need, I need somewhere where I need this thing to start. Now, I'm paraphrasing y'all. ain't going to find that. Don't be going looking for that scripture. I'm paraphrasing. That's what I told you. I'm going to do a little something different today because I... I'm usually read more than I talk, but I'm going to talk a little bit more than I read. They said, I need, I need a test case, all right? So out of all my people, I will call a group out to be called my people. And, said, and, and, and the goal is to have a way for all people to come back to me. And so that's why I got a promise. Even when I pull Abram out, who became Abraham, even when I pull you out, you're still going to be the father of many nations. Right now, we're going to work on Israel. And so, after he started that and we went over that, we talked about Abraham, we've done that, you know, years past, studies past, that we've talked about that. And, and, and so, he brings them out and, and, and they began to form you know, uh, 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 the nation of God. And, then, and then, they, then they went down to Egypt and got stuck there 400 years got stuck there 400 years. They began to cry out to God. God then uh, 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 sent Moses to bring them out of Egypt to, to, to serve him, right? And so, and then when, 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 when he brings them to God, that's when God gives them law. Sin existed always from, from, from Adam and Eve, but it's not until now that, 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 that sin brings forth the need for law. Sin brought a need for the law, right? You, you, you in Egypt, you know, you, 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 you in the world, you among the, the, the you know, sinful people, you, do, you can do whatever you want, whenever you want. There's no, you know, matter of fact, you don't even know it's sin. You just know it's something that your flesh want to do. Hey, can you imagine, you know, doing things, you know, you're God's people, but you're doing things that God doesn't like, and you don't even know God don't like it. Because until God actually gives law, I didn't know that was wrong. So he began to, you know, he began to give, he gave the Ten Commandments, and so now because of the Ten Commandments, people now know that what they're doing is wrong. They now know that what they're doing is, uh, 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 you know, is, is, is opposite of what God wants them to do. And so the, the purpose of the law was to establish and distinguish right from wrong, good from bad, uh, 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 from what people were doing to what God wanted them to do. But as time went on, the law was perverted, and the law was changed. And then people began to increase the law. And, in, and, and it changed from the spirit of the law, from, from, from the spirit of why God gave it, to just enforcing the letter of the law. It was no longer I'm doing it, I'm, I'm doing it because I love God or because this is what God wants. It's I'm doing it uh, I, I, so I don't get my head cut off, so I don't get stoned, so I don't get the penalty of what comes with doing it. And so I won't do it if you can see me doing it. 
But if I can get away with it, I'm going to do it. Because I'm not doing it because I love God. I'm doing it because somebody told me that I can't do it. How many of y'all follow the speed limit? How many of y'all see that 25 or 35 and say, this is what I'm going to do? How many, how, how many, how many of y'all think, see, that, see that, that, that speed limit as a suggestion? You see it as a suggestion. You see it as, you, you know, you, you see the speed limit and you, and you want to go faster, and so you do this. Is there anybody here that can enforce this law? And then you go, oh, well, I'm going to just go take my chances. Because I, I got to go. I got to do what I want to do. And that's how people begin to look at the law. It's a suggestion. You know, or, or, or is anybody here that can see me if I break this law? Not, not, not discounting God. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what made people not, it made people try not to sin instead of wanting to live right. And that takes us back to, you know, kind of where we are, right? And so what happened is that the law brought a need for a Jesus. The law brought a need for a Jesus. Yeah, that's right. Because all people are God's people. And so the Israelites, the Jewish people, as I said, they were a test case. They was ground zero, they was guinea pigs for the world. They was guinea pigs because, because I, I want you to say, they, they, they answered the question, can you become free by, from sin by following laws? We answered the question, can you become free from sin from just following laws? They answered that question. And the answer is no, because they failed. That's why I can't understand, you know, y'all, there's, there's this new movement called the Black Israelites, right? Y'all heard that? Y- y- y'all seen them? And they've been trying to say, well, who was the original Jews? All you telling me is, you, you want to be the biggest loser. Because it doesn't make a difference who was the Israelites. The Israelites failed. They'd be black, they'd be white, they'd be purple. Don't make a difference. They was a test case. And they failed. They showed that you cannot be free from sin from following law. So I wouldn't be running trying to prove that's who I am. I, I'm just a child of God. I'm a, you know, I, I, all people are God's people. I just want to be one of God's people. Because if I'm one of God's people, then, then I can get what's coming next. That's why Jesus came, and that's why he came to the Jewish people first, because they proved the, the, the need for Jesus because they could not conquer sin on their own by trying or attempting to follow the law that if you, if you, if you didn't follow one of them, you was guilty of breaking all of them. That's hard. If I don't follow, if I, you mean if I mess up on one, it's just like I'm a murderer? I ain't killed nobody. But, you know, if, if, you, if you covered it, you're guilty of all of them. And so they proved that it couldn't, it couldn't happen. And God's original vision and promise was to have a way for all of his people to be free. And, 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 and we connect back to not Moses' law, but we connect that back to Abraham's promise. If you're going back to the law of Moses, you ain't going back far enough. We got to go back to the promise of Abraham. And if you are free from sin, you don't, look, when you become free from sin, and we already talked about we are free from sin, the reason why you, 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 you're free from the law is because the law was there for sin. And if you're free from sin, you don't need the law. Well, I'm going to get into the scriptures in a minute. I just need to, I need to lay some fine work. I just, because the law was created for sin. And if you're free from sin, why would you need the law if the law was created for the sin and now sin was cut away? If sin was cut away, why you need the law? It's, it's law should drop right with the sin. Ooh, thank 
you, Jesus. Where's that scripture? I think I passed the scripture. Did I pass the scripture? No, I didn't. I want you to see something. Y'all pass the scripture up there? Yeah. There you go. But the people of Israel, this is in Romans 9 and 31. But the people of Israel who try so hard to get right with God by keeping the law never succeeded. In case y'all thought I made that up. They never succeeded. It was never successful uh, of trying to get right, uh, 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 right with God. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Let me see what you got next. Why not? There you go. Because they were trying to get right with God, keeping the law instead of trusting him. They stumbled over the great rock in their path. What's next? Come on. God warned them of this in the scriptures when they said, when he, when he said, I am placing a stone in Jerusalem that makes people stumble, a rock that makes them fall. But anyone who trusts in him will never be. That's why God, that's why God kept going, saying, look, if my people who are called by my name, he kept, he kept telling them what they need to do. You need to humble yourself. I mean, he kept telling them, I will trust the Lord with, with all my heart. You know, lean not to my own understanding. All my ways acknowledge him, and he'll direct my path. You're starting to follow the law instead of trusting in God. You got too many people talking about, well, pastor, just tell me what we can't do. Tell me what we can't wear. Tell me what, no, trust God. Why don't, you now have an opportunity to have a relationship with God. Why don't you talk to him? Stop asking your pastor, why don't you ask for guidance from the Holy Spirit on what you should be wearing and what you should be doing? And you want your pastor, hey, you know, is, is this all right? What about a half a glass of wine? What about this? What about this? What about that? You got a relationship with God. Why don't you ask him? Why do you keep asking your neighbor? Why do you keep asking somebody? Because you're looking for somebody to agree with your sin. What you want to do. But sin has been cut away. Oh, thank you. All right, all right, all right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. All right, let's look at Galatians 1, 24. Oh, I came out of that. Mm -mm. Give me the next one you got. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to look at it. Where you go? There you go. That's why all people are God people. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people. When in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. Come on, let's go. He did this by ending the system of law. What does it say? Ending the system of law with its commandments and regulations. He made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from the two groups. It was either the Jewish people and everybody else. And now it's not a separation. God, Jesus came for everybody. Come on, let's go to the next one. Let's look at the next one. Together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross, and our hostility toward each other was put to death. People still going around trying, making separation between, well, I, I, we the real Israelites and, 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 and we real black Jews. You're still trying to make a separation when Christ came and ended the separation. There is no separation. We ain't even concerned with the Jews no more, let alone white or black. It's God's people. Come on, let's look at the next one. This is what the law did. What's the next one? Come on, what you got? It says, the purpose of my instruction is that all believers would be filled with love that comes from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and a genuine faith. Why is that? Because, because the real commandments now are not the Ten Commandments. The commandments are love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. He said, if you do these, that will fulfill everything. Remember, Jesus said, 
Jesus said, I didn't come, I didn't come to do away with the word. I came to fulfill, I mean, to do away with the law. I came to fulfill the law. Well, I'm going to show you what the purpose of the law was. Come on, let's keep going. He said, but some people have missed the whole point. They've turned away from these things and spend their time in meaningless discussions. Hold on, I'm telling you what meaningless discussions are. You know, uh, 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 is it wrong to do this? Is it wrong to do that? Is it wrong? Come on, come on. The fact that you're asking, and nobody, I, I, don't, I don't get in a group talking about, you know, is it wrong for me to brush my teeth? Is it, is, it, is it wrong for me to, to give somebody $10? Is it, is, is, is it wrong for me to give somebody a hug? We don't ever ask, why we don't ask them questions? Because we want to ask those questions, is it wrong when it looked real close to the world? When it looked real close to the line, now we got to ask the question, is it wrong for me to do this? You know the, you know the answer already. And, 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 and you know that the Bible says, shun the very appearance of evil. All right, well, come on, let's, what, what else to say? Come, what, what, what's, come on. Let me see. What's the next one? They want to be known as teachers of the law of Moses, but they don't know what they are talking about, even though they speak so confidently. It's got a whole lot of people telling you, real con we was real confident about 20 years ago talking about red shoes. Can't wear red shoes, can't wear open-toed shoes. We was, we was real confident about our, our, our pants and lipstick. We was real confident about what we were saying was law. We was real confident about you can't go to the movies or, or you can't play with marbles. We was real confident about putting laws on people. Come on, let's look at it. What, what does it, it say? Come on, what's the next one? We know that the law is good when used correctly. I don't know what the law, but it, but it says... Come on, I, I like it. It's a, but the law was, a, was not intended for people who do what is right. The law was never intended for people who want to wake up in the morning uh, with their mind on doing right. But it's for people who are lawless. It's for people who are rebellious, who are ungodly and sinful, who consider nothing sacred and defile what is holy, who kill their father or mother or commit other murders. That law was never for me. Well, it was early on, but it ain't for me now. I was rebellious. I was lawless. Come on, you ain't got to say amen, but you can say oh me. Oh me, oh my. You know it was you too. You did what you wanted to do when you wanted to do it. But if you wake up in the morning with your mind on, look, doing right, the law is not for you. And that's what, that's the mindset of a Christian. The mindset of a Christian is not thinking, waking up and talking about I'm trying not to sin. No, I want to live right. And if you want to live right, you, the law is not for you. That's why you're free from the law. You are free from the law if your mind is right. That's why we need a renewed mind. If you wake up in the morning and want to, let me see that one again. It says, the law is for people who are, no, go back, one more. We know about them people. It's coming. Now go backwards. <laughs> one and nine, one and nine. Click on, there you go. the law was not intended for people who do what is right. That's why you're free from it. Because you should be people who do what is right. Not people who are dying to sin. Oh, I, I die daily. Now those people, that, the law for you. See, that's why, that's why we had to make that distinct, distinction. That's why we have to understand. We have to understand, we are, if you're free from sin, you're free from the law. If you're, bound in, 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 if you're bound in sin, then you need the law. If you accept what Jesus did for you on the cross and what he did when he, were, he rose from, the, from, from hell, he rose from hell, he, get, he, 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 he delivered you from sin, he cut sin away from you, sin is not your problem anymore. I don't have a sin problem. You don't have a sin problem. What you have is a desire problem. And that's why you need to desire good things. 
That's why you need to, that's why, again, I, I keep saying it until I run out of breath. You need to change who you associate yourself with. You need to change what you watch. You need to change what you listen to. And you need to change how you praise and worship God. If you change those things, then, then you, you can change your desire problem. But if you keep doing the same old things, you're going to keep getting the same results. My sin desires something that God says I should not have. All right, all right, so now let's look. Now let's go to those. Woo! Go back to 10. One in 10. Sorry. That's me. I, it should be here, but it's not. It says the law is for people who are sexually immoral or who practice homosexuality. You think I'm making that up? Y'all thought I was a, you so hard on the homosexuals. You so hard. It's right there. People who practice homosexuality or are slave traders. That's why, you know, if you read the Bible, I don't care who you are, you can't say slave is good in the eyes of God. It's not, it's not being, you know, slave trading is good. It was never good. It was always in the Bible that it was. Liars, promise breakers, or who do anything else that contradicts the wholesome teaching. Anything else. So, so that's just like, well, just in case I miss something, here it go. See, I don't need the law because I don't, I'm not, I don't plan to do any of those things. See, that's why, you know, I got to go back to that one. That's why I see when people, oh yeah, man, the white man used the Bible to put people in slaves. No, he didn't. He used his own selfish desires because if you read the Bible, it don't, it, it don't approve of slavery. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I get so sick of people talking about the white man's Bible. It ain't the white man's Bible because God's plan was for everybody. Plan for everybody to be free from sin. Oh, okay, come on. So anything that comes from the glorious good news entrusted to me by our blessed God. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Come on, what's next? That might even be it. Oh, I like this one. I like this one. I like this one. Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. Remember he said, I didn't come do away with the law, but I came to fulfill the law. Right? Well, here, right here, it says, law being fulfilled. Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. As a result, all who believe in him are made right with God. I'm made right with God. I just need to stay right with God. And I stay right with God by waking up in the morning and wanting to do right. Come on, let's, what's next? I'm excited. I'm like, what's next? Everyone who believes in him is declared right with God, something the law of Moses could never do. See, that's why I'm understanding. Why would people try to become something that never worked? I, you know, I, 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 I want to be black Israelite now. I want to be, you know, so now I got to, you know, don't eat this and don't eat that and, don't, and walk in and don't walk, you know, well, why y'all worship on the Sabbath? Man, time out for all of that. Come out for all that. The law is over. If, if, if you don't have a sin nature, you don't need the law. And if you don't need the law, you need to let that stuff go. Yes. Come on, what I got? What's, what's next? Oh, praise the Lord. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap and pray. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. I was just, I just, I just need to wet your whistle on that. I needed to give you some scriptures to understand what we're talking about when we start talking about free from sin and free from the law. Because there's so many people, well, what about this? And what about the Bible said this? And what about the Bible said you can't do this and you can't do that? And when you begin to understand, I'm free from that. See, but the Bible even also says, look, but don't let your freedom give you a, a think you got a free pass to sin. No, no, no. Your freedom says, I have now a right to follow God. I have a right to follow Jesus. I have a, a, a right to walk in my freedom, and that means apart from sin. Ah, glory to God. God is a good God. He's a wonderful God. He's a merciful God. And, when, when, and, and so when people say, Jesus did it all on the cross, now, now you can understand he did do it all on the cross, but he did his part. He didn't do your part. He didn't do your part. You, 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 you now have an obligation to get yourself into that Bible. 
You got an obligation. You ain't going to get it all on Sunday. But I, I, I should pique your curiosity so on Sunday that you want to go back in that word and you want to you find out what's still there. Because that's what happens for me. Sometimes I'm reading something and I'm going, what? Man, I'm like, man, I'm like, come on, we stand. God is a good God. Hallelujah. Man, I tell you, I love this word so much. Hallelujah, it's exciting. And, I, you know, it, it, and I've read the, I have read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation a couple times. And I'm reading the Bible now like, like I'm reading a, a mystery novel going, whoa, oh, oh my goodness. Oh my God. I can't believe it. We have, we have come, we've been free from law and we've bound ourselves back up with law trying to make people live right. You know, I got a, I, I got a secret. You can't make people live right. You can put, you, we, go, we go right back into putting a whole bunch of laws on people. Whole bunch of rules on people. And Jesus, Jesus looked at all the spirit and he looked over to God and he's like, did, didn't I just die to break us from all that? We done went back in a whole bunch of traditionalism. That's why Jesus, and that's why I couldn't understand why Jesus said, you know what? Your traditions have made the word of God of none effect. It, it, it's supposed to work, but you didn't bounce yourself back up. You're so busy wondering about what you can't do and, 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 and what, you, what you should do. You, you're not thinking about how I should love God. If your mind is loving God and loving your neighbor, you don't have to worry about nothing else. Instead of asking, instead of asking people, is it all right to do it, why don't you just say, what, would, it, would this be loving to God if I did this? Would this show love to God by doing this? Would this show love to my neighbor if I did this? You know, if I, you know, that should cut out so much attitude, so many wrong and hurtful things that are said by Christians. Is this showing love? Yeah. That one question satisfies everything the law tried to accomplish. And prior to Jesus, we couldn't walk in love. Prior to Jesus, we couldn't live in love. But now we can. Now we can. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. That old devil, I was, I was so worried about my wife, I didn't transpose what I had on there to my tablet. I had something old on my tablet, but thank God it got there. Hallelujah, thank you. I'm, I'm looking at that, I'm like, no, I changed that, I changed that. That's not what I want to say today. But that's all right, God is good. God is good. Is there, is there one today who has not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You are still bound, both in sin and the law. Hallelujah. But don't you want to be free? Don't you want to walk free? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, when you really think about it, the real purpose of a speed limit is so that people won't kill somebody. That they will drive safely in certain areas so they won't hurt somebody. And, and, and if you put that in your mind instead of the speed limit is just a suggestion, then you understand, you know what? If I love my family, I wouldn't want anybody speeding, so I'm not. If I love my children, I wouldn't want anybody speeding in a 20 mile an hour children's zone, so guess what? I'm not going to do it either. So the thing is, is we got to look by, be, beyond uh, uh, what the law says and, 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 and wonder why it was created. And when we look at the, the 
Bible and we understand why the law was created. It was created because God wanted to bring his people back to him. He wanted his people to look to him and he wanted his people to trust him and he wanted his people to obey him. Not simply because it was the letter of the law, but because they loved him. And he proved it couldn't happen by just merely words. But because of his son that he sacrificed on the cross for you and for me, we can be free from sin and not need law. Is that one today? He wants to be free from the sin that is forever so present in your life, in your mind, and in your actions. If you want to be free, truly free, just raise your hand with me right now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Everybody else, your eyes are closed, your head is bowed, you're praying for your brother, your sister who wants to be free. Hallelujah. And those who with your hand that is Lift it up. Repeat after me, Father God. I thank you. Woo, I thank you. I thank you for your vision. I thank you for your plan. And I thank you for your son, Jesus. Who not only died on the cross with my sins, but he rose from hell. Hallelujah. And paid the price and penalty for my sin. And I accept what he did. And I accept the freedom from sin and now the freedom from the law that I understand I ask them to my life right now hallelujah to forgive me to lead me and to guide me but most importantly to reconnect and reunite me back with you father I'm not a stepchild I've always been your child Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your word said, if, if you be in Christ, then I'm Abraham's seed. And I'm an heir according to the promise that you promised him. Hallelujah. That he would be the father of many nations. Hallelujah. And I'm one of those nations. And I'm one of your children. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Praise God. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap for free. I don't, I don't know about you, but that was so freeing for me because, you know, in my head and as I grew up, I, I, I'm always thinking about Jewish people are, y'all can have a seat, Jewish people are God's people. Jewish people are God's people and we're just engrafted in. Like we're stepchildren, like we, we didn't belong, like we was an afterthought. I'm in no afterthought. God was thinking about me from the beginning. He loved me from the beginning. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And I'm one of his children. Hallelujah, and more important than any of his children. Just the same. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. God is good, God is good.